Well, good morning or good evening or good afternoon, whatever time it is where you are. I'm uh, back to Building on the Rock, book three, and we uh, just started that uh, the last time I was reading, and now we move on. This chapter is entitled, Captain Barker's Trial. Many years ago, James Barker became captain of a whaling ship. He had sailed with his crew for many years and was well known. No one was more profane than he was. Every command he gave was punctuated with swear words. Captain Barker was set to sail the Pacific Ocean on another long whaling hunt. But the night before he sailed, he heard a sermon preached in his hometown. The sermon left a deep impression on this careless captain. The Lord worked a great change in his heart. The ship sailed the next day as planned. Before long, however, the crew noticed a difference in their captain. They soon noticed that he did not swear anymore. Instead, Captain Barker seemed to have a reverent attitude. Often they saw his lips moving and realized that he was praying. Captain Barker and his crew sailed for several weeks. They searched the endless waters, but no whales were to be seen. But one Sunday evening, just as the sun was setting, one of the crew cried out, Look over there! There's one! Everyone immediately sprang into action. Captain Barker was also excited at first, but the words, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, sounded out in his heart. The men were preparing to let the boats down to go after the whale, but suddenly Captain Barker shouted, Men, wait! We'll not be going after that well today. You can't be serious, one man answered impatiently. We've been sailing for weeks already, and this is the first well we've seen. Now remember, children, they're doing this for their living. You know, that's, that's the cargo. That's what they're out there for. Who's going to feed my wife and children if this well gets away? Questioned another. But Captain Barker remained firm. I will personally pay for any loss you suffer from this, he quietly answered. This helped settle down most of the men, but First Mate Stouffer was not satisfied. Besides, he was next to the captain in rank and wanted to show his authority. What about Mr. Peters, the owner of the ship? Do you think he'll be pleased with this loss? Seeing a smile on the faces of several men, he continued, We want you to sign a statement saying that this is your idea, but that we do not agree with you. The captain realized that no ship owner would ever hire him as captain if he did such a thing, but he answered, It would not be legal to sign such a paper on Sunday, but I will do this for you tomorrow. First mate Stouffer tried once more, Captain, I have a wife and five children to take care of. If it is in God's providence to bring us a well on Sunday, then I believe we must catch it. But Captain Barker did not seem to hear what his first mate said. He dropped down into a bench, completely lost in thought. Over and over he repeated these words, Thy will be done. Of course, that should be our prayer about everything. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done. Suddenly, Stouffer shook his captain by the shoulder. Captain, look at how fast the barometer is falling. We're in for a storm. It's a good thing that none of our men went out in the boats earlier. Hmm. How about that? Within half an hour, every crew member was struggling against a fierce hurricane. All night, vicious winds and waves battered the ship, but the brave seamen struggled on. Many began to pray to the Lord to save them from the terrible storm. And the Lord answered their prayers. He protected them from all harm. After three days, 
the storm finally passed. But the crew found that they had been carried hundreds of miles in the wrong direction. They were sailing in waters that had always been known to be the poorest area for fishing. The men who had been filled with terror from the storm were now filled with despair. But as the sea became more calm, their despair turned to joy. They found that they were surrounded by a large group of whales. Captain Barker bowed his head in wonder and thanksgiving. He thought of the words of the Lord Jesus, Cast your net on the right side of the ship and you shall find. What an unexpected blessing they had now received. Within a very short time, the crew had successfully captured two whales. The following days were very busy. They soon had as many whales as their ship could carry. The grateful captain and crew were able to return to their home port several months earlier than usual. Mr. Peters was very surprised to see his ship sail into port so soon after leaving. Captain Barker greeted him as he and the crew came ashore. The crew gathered around the two men as their captain told Mr. Peters of that, of all that had happened. The Lord has delivered us from the storm, and he has blessed us greatly for obeying his command to honor the Sabbath day, Captain Barker said as he ended his story. You've been wonderfully delivered and richly blessed, exclaimed Mr. Peters. It's entirely up to you in the future whether you let down the boats on Sunday or not. By the grace of God, Captain Barker continued to obey his master. For several years, no other ships brought in as much as theirs. God moves in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. He sets his footsteps in the sea and rides upon the storm. We sing that hymn every once in a while. Another good lesson, another good reminder that he who honors the Lord will be honored. God honors those who honor him. Don't ever forget that, no matter what. God bless. See you next time, Lord willing.